What's up everyone, it's Matt Martin with The Grass Factor and today I wanted to do a video about an herbicide that comes up a lot during the live stream and I always have my generals spiel with it. So I figured today, let's go ahead and dive into the ins and outs of Metzelfuron methyl, also known as MSM turf. So we're going to start right here with the label because obviously, you know, this is the law, right? And then we can talk a little bit about some anecdotal data after we cover just the basics of what's actually in the label. Again, this product is metzulfuron methyl. That is the active ingredient and it's a very, very potent, very low use rate product. Talking about metzulfuron methyl, let's first discuss the turf types that this is applicable to. This is only going to be applicable to warm season turf types in uh, the Bermuda, Zoysia grass, centipede, and St. Augustine varieties. I will not recommend anybody spray this on cool season grass regardless of what the label says. There are other products out there. If you're trying to remove ryegrass from a Kentucky bluegrass lawn, the potential is there for this to become that tool in the toolbox, but as a general blanket broad spread recommendation, do not apply this to cool season grasses. If we look at our PPE here and typically what's recommended, uh, long sleeve shirts, long pants, shoes and socks, chemical resistant gloves, category A such as butyl rubber, rubber, natural rubber, neoprene rubber, or nitrile rubber. So nothing extreme as far as PPE is concerned. Um, they're not asking you to wear a full Tyvek suit with a respirator when using this product. Um, one of the environmental hazards here to pay attention to is do not apply directly to water or areas where surface water is present or areas below the mean high water mark where runoff may occur. So clearly what this is telling us is that there is a fair amount of water movement that can occur with this product. So be very careful when and how you use it. One thing I particularly like about this label is the sprayer cleanup how they recommend cleaning your tank after an application of MSM before moving to a new herbicide. Drain tank, drain the tank, rinse interior surface of tank, then flush tank, boom, and hoses with clean water for a minimum of five minutes. You can also use ammonia as a cleaning solution. <laughs> Steps three and four, repeat step two. Repeat step one. So it's telling you to do multiple flushes every time you change away from using this product. Um, and then if we look at the weeds that are actually controlled, you know, Bahia grass is one of them. That would be a big reason for wanting to use this product. Foxtail is another, and also your ryegrasses. If we look at the dicots that are controlled, these are going to be our broadleaf weeds. You see it has a fair amount of weeds listed on here as controllable type weeds. It is recommended that we use a non-ionic surfactant with this product. Um, and it's asking for 0.25%, a quarter of a percent by volume. So here they list out 32 ounces in 100 gallons of water. An easy way to do that is to take your gallon of spray solution that you have. So say you've got four gallons of diluted material you're going to be spraying. You multiply that times 128 and then multiply that by 0.25% and that'll give you your ounces of non-ionic surfactant to add in with your spray solution of your metzulfuron methyl. Now it's recommending spray volumes of 20 to 80 gallons per acre. I can say I have run this pro product at less than 20 gallons per acre. I've run it at 11 gallons per acre with no ill effects out of my permagreen. Typically, one thing you would want to put into your mind when you're using a sulfonyl urea like this is that at lower volume, volume applications, the potential for uh, injury to turf to occur. Um, and then if we look at our rates, this is a really important thing to pay attention to here are the rates and the weeds controlled at those, at those rates. One thing that is left to interpretation with metzulfuron is the fact that there is a wide variety of rates that go into controlling of certain weeds. 
When you're talking about a product that you're only applying at one ounce to the acre, 0.33 to 0.5 ounces per acre is a very large percentage swing in terms of what rate actually kills the weed. So you have to be very careful with this product. At a half ounce to the acre, you're talking about tiny, tiny amounts per thousand square feet. And you can see at the lowest rates they recommend, you can control ryegrass at green's height. This isn't going to necessarily work for ryegrass that's maintained at half an inch or higher, but ryegrass that may be at like 180 thousandths of an inch, 150 thousandths of an inch, you're okay to spray this to control that ryegrass at uh, a quarter of a percent, at a quarter of an ounce per acre or less. Um, you can see somewhere in that you can start to get some control of your other broadleaf weeds here. See dandelions, bittercress, chickweed, clover, um, spurweed, and wild carrot. As you move into a half ounce, you get some of your woodier or more dense root system uh, type weeds here. And you've got fairway height ryegrass at 0.33 to a half ounce. So here I'm talking about wood sorrel, wild onion, uh, wild garlic, mustard, pigweed, uh, which you typically don't see a whole lot in turf. That's going to be more ag. Um, ground ivy, Carolina geranium, some of these lespedeza, things that even three-way may struggle with, you can see you can get control at um, a single application of your mesofuron methyl. Um, if we start moving into bahia grass, it's got a very, very wide range there. Typically, half ounce to the acre has always worked for me with Bahia grass control. And then as we start moving in from 0.5 ounces to 1 ounce per acre, this is where we start to get into our more difficult weeds, right? So again, it's going to list dollar weed with the likelihood of having to make a second application. Canada thistle is not going to give you complete control. I can say that if you mix three-way with MSM on Canada thistle, it works exceptionally well. Virginia buttonweed doesn't work well as stated right here on the label on mature plants it has to be young plants and typically reapplication is required in four to six weeks personally what i like to do when going after buttonweed and i'm I, a product like metsulfuron methyl is on the table is that i will do a tank mix with like metsulfuron methyl and uh, celsius those two in combination will work really well and those will get after your um, more mature virginia buttonweed plants I think this is an important part here too. So if we look, it always states, you know, agitate the fire out of this product, and that's mainly because you're using such a low use rate. But if we look right here, spray preparations of this product may degrade in acid solutions if not used in 24 hours. And it is stable in alkaline solutions, therefore re-agitate, or thoroughly re-agitate before using. Okay, so this is this is a sulfonyl urea. All sulfonyl ureas are going to be stable in a higher pH solution. So if you typically have to use like Chemstick or an acidifying surfactant when you go out with a product, um, you do not need that when you're using a sulfonyl urea such as metsulfuron methyl. If you do, typically it will degrade your product within 24 hours to the point of no longer being effective. So this is one of those products, all sulfonyl ureas and all phenoxy herbicide products, it's important to pay attention to the pH of the water you're using in your tank mix. So you may run into a situation where you go from hero to zero because the pH of your water was six and a half, when if you were at eight, you could have kept it for longer than 24 hours and still gotten good results. Um, tank mixing, it always tells you to test, and that's pretty much normal for anything. I can't say I've ever mixed anything uh, with metsulfuron methyl that's caused any issues. I'm sure there are things out there. I just don't know what they are. And it always says that when you're running metsulfuron methyl, metsulfuron methyl should always be added to the tank first. Now, here's an interesting thing is that you see Kentucky bluegrass and fine fescue on the label. I will say right now, unless you're okay with an acceptable level of damage, I would not put metsulfuron methyl on Kentucky bluegrass or fine fescue. It comes with an inherent risk. Please understand that. And if you look, the big important part of this is do not exceed a total of a half ounce per acre in a nine month period. So you get one shot if you're going to apply it on that turf. 
And in that one shot, if you don't get it, you don't get it. You got to wait nine months before you reapply. The other thing too, is that that tells you the potential persistence of this product to last up to nine months. Now that's going to go back. If you think about the uh, pH of your soil um, and as it relates to the pH of your water. So we know that a high pH water will lead to a longer half-life of the metzulfuron methyl molecule. Same thing in your soil. If you have a higher pH soil, you can get up to a nine month persistence in your soil. However, the closer you are to neutral or acidic, it begins to decrease significantly. So keep that in mind. It has the, the potential to be extremely persistent in your soil. St. Augustine, Bermuda grass, and zoysia grass can tolerate a pretty wide variety of rates. I will say St. Augustine in heat tends to be way more sensitive to metzulfuron methyl. It is going to dehydrate the, the look of the plant. It will become chlorotic and it will suspend growth. And the other thing about sulfonylureas is that they tend to have a growth regulatory effect on your desired turf grass when you spray it on it. So keep that in mind. Again, potential is there for it to slow the growth. So any damage that occurs when you apply this to your existing grass may linger for an exceptional long period of time. Then take into the, the fact that it could be very persistent in the soil if you have high pH and you really start to run into an issue where the persistence of it will retard the growth for a longer period of time for the damage to continue to show. So understand with this product comes risk behind grass behind grass for the selective control behind grass use 0.25 to 0.75 apply a repeat application four to six weeks later if necessary higher rates on argentine common and paraguayan behind grass okay Again, it does a great job on Bahia grass control. Typically, what I would recommend doing is splitting it up into two applications on that four to six week mark. Make a half ounce per acre application twice spread out. You can see on centipede grass, you can go from 0.25 to a half ounce of product per acre. Some chlorosis, chlorosis or stunning will occur. That is a 100% yes, it will occur. Just get it into your mind. Spraying metzulfuron methyl and centipede grass, it is going to stunt the turf grass. And it may not be evident, it may not always turn chlorotic, but it will suspend the growth almost entirely for uh, a period of time. And then I always thought this is an interesting thing on this label right here too, and that is allow one week between the application of MSM, turf herbicide, and other pesticide products. This guideline can be relaxed where a severe insect or disease attack requires immediate treatment. Remember, Pesticides encompass insecticides, fungicides, nematicides, uh, herbicides. They all fall into that category. So it's saying that within one week of application of MSM, do not apply any of those products. And for whatever reason that is, I don't know. I'm sure it has to do with chemistry. <laughs> and that's beyond my level of understanding of chemistry. But it's one thing to keep in mind. You may open the plant up to additional uh, injury that may occur by um, uh, applying these within one week of application of MSM turf. Now, the other thing you have to keep in mind is that when you're making an application of MSM is that sometimes you have to make an all-in-one application in the same tank mix, and that's doable too. But keep in mind to be in, in strict accordance with the label, that is how you would apply it. I think this is also an important part here where uh, it's used to control many species of weeds and deciduous trees on sites where conifers are growing or ready to be planted. Deciduous trees are going to be trees that lose their leaves every year, your hardwoods or softwoods. Note that it can be extremely damaging to deciduous trees. Application timing. Apply it. After the weeds have emerged or after undesirable hardwoods have broken winter dormancy and reached the point of full leaf expansion. So again, they're talking about how metzulfuron methyl can be sprayed to kill full-size trees. Be careful with it. 
Apply up to four ounces per acre for loblolly and slash pines. Transplant the following planting season. So you can apply at four ounces per acre, and this would not apply to anybody in the turf market. But this is just painting the example that if you do that, you can't plant for a full year after running that high rate. And it's that high rate in the north is only two ounces per acre, and you're talking about transplanting the next year. Then they also list some other tank mix companions here. Accord, I don't know what this is. This is probably for agriculture, and I'm not dealing with ag agriculture. You know, you've got Velpar, Velpar DF, Alst Extra. Um, and, you know, some of these are just for, you know, completely knocking out the potential for anything to grow there. So there's actually some literature that is put out by the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, that list tank mixes with metsulfuron methyl that show um, tank mixes with it can keep things from growing for you know 180, 365 days, uh, and it's part of a mix that will completely wipe out anything that is attempting to grow in the soil. So I really appreciate this section of it too, um, and this is going to tell you what your replant interval is based on the species you're looking to replant, right? So, and I think, again, one thing to hammer home is right here, for soils with a pH of 7.5 or less, observe the following replant intervals. If your pH is above that, all of this is complete and total garbage. You can throw it out the window. But we can see here, brome grass, a lot of us aren't going to be dealing with planting brome grass. You know, that's, a, that's going to be a native grass that you're trying to control slopes or something with but you know two to four months depending on your rate uh, fescues again these are going to be uh, non turf type tall fescues and creeping fescues and not desirable turf grasses and you can see anywhere from one to four months as a, as a, a replant interval um, some rye grasses you're looking at one to three months on rye so again, this just paints that picture that it is persistent and does have a long half-life in the soil compared to other broadleaf weed control products. Now, if there's one thing I could definitely recommend, it is do not put this on tall fescue. Um, there's going to be a section in this label that talks about being able to put it on fescue, but I'm telling you right now, don't do it. And the reason why is that it will always lead to some sort of irreversible damage. And I'll throw up some pictures here that were sent to me by someone asking about if this damage was caused by metsulfuron methyl in tall fescue. And that's exactly what it is. So it will list here that you can do this. And it says you can do it with four tenths of an ounce uh, and with the tank mix of 2,4-D and the lowest specified rate and a non-ionic surfactant and make it later in the spring after the new growth is five to six inches or tall. Do not use a surfactant if you use liquid nitrogen. Do not use spray adjuvant unless it is a non-ionic surfactant. Don't use a methylated seed oil and don't use a crop oil concentrate. Yields from the first cutting may be reduced. So this is for coarse fescue, not turf type tall fescue. Coarse fescue being like a Kentucky 31. And even then, it is still telling you it is going to cause an incredible amount of damage that you have to be okay with when you make this application. So let's look here where it talks specifically about soils, right? This product should not be used on soils with a pH above a 7.9. We're looking at you, Texas. Uh, because soil residues will not break down quickly and can remain in the soil for 34 months or more. 34 months before using check soil ph by taking several soil samples at a depth of zero to four inches from representative areas in the field analyzes values uh the samples separately for ph value so again this is not for the faint of heart this is not something you could be lackadaisical about this is not something you can make a mistake over applying there is a huge risk that comes with applying this product and it should be left for only the worst particular instances where you have to do it. Here we're going to look at the rates at which we are controlling brush 
and brush has a very broad definition. It says undesirable brush. But if we look at the species that are here, ash, these are trees at one to two ounces, at one to three ounces per acre. Aspen, blackberries, cherries, more trees, one to three ounces. Cottonwoods, two to three ounces. Elders and elms, one to three ounces. So, and it just goes on. Uh, tulip poplars. Willows, oak trees, one to three ounces. So you can see this is particularly hard on woody plants, deciduous trees. It does not like this. And in fact, it can actually pull it out of the soil. Remember talking about that high pH situation? When you're dealing with high pH and it's persistent in the soil, these trees can have it grow into the tree and take it out even though it was not directly applied to the tree just because of how long it lives in the soil. All right, everyone, so I'm just going to you know, clip the highlights there and then stress just how intense of a product this really is. And as the general rule of thumb that I put out there, um, it is that... MSM turf it at 0.5 ounces, one half ounce per acre kills weeds. At one ounce per acre, it kills trees. And at two ounces per acre, it kills the soil. And I don't mean kills the soil in the sense that it's just going to annihilate and make your soil worthless. But what it will do is provide enough of a lethal dose to take out all plants attempting to grow in it. So... This is one to put into the toolbox and store away for special occasions only. You need to have very precise application equipment with this herbicide. Not only that, you have to have the experience with your overlap rates to make sure you don't overlap. Because if you're applying at 0.5 ounces per acre and you overlap, then all of a sudden you're at, at one ounce per acre and you're at a lethal dose for trees. So for instance, you're spraying underneath your oak tree and you're taking out tree saplings. This would be a great product to take out tree saplings, but you overlap and then all of a sudden you smoke a 40 foot tall oak tree. I know it happens because I've seen it happen. So anyway, I hope everybody learned something about this product today. If you have any questions about this product, feel free to ask in the comments down below about them. I will get to your questions. And also, uh, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. That's what lets me know to keep going making these types of videos. All right, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Have a good one. Take it easy.